I was remembering a picture that we have when the family first bought the uh -huh. property. They're all on the shore. That's right. And Henry a baby. That's right. And I was trying to imagine exactly where that picture would have been taken right. in this whole. And there are pictures of the beach. kids here with uh, in a canoe, and then Ernest and the sister Marceline splashing around in the water. Yeah. Grace even made that into postcards to send letters to the family. Ernie said this was also the family bathtub too. Oh, right. yes. <laughs> uh, the outhouse uh -huh. in one direction and the bathtub this way at the lake. Very fitting. If you're here at Windermere and you read about the story of Indian Camp and you really want to know where Indian Camp is, it's over that away, through Bacon's Farm, into an intersection that was there, and that's where the Indians had their camp. Now, is that the Indian Camp where the husband slit his throat? because of his wife screaming for the birth? I don't know. But that's the Indian camp that Nick Adams, a.k.a. Ernie Hemingway, knew. As a reader of Hemingway and as a scholar of Hemingway, this place is like Mecca. It is so important, so central to Hemingway's life, to his work. Uh, so to be here is, is amazing, and it's interesting because you read about these place names in Hemingway's work, Charlevoix, Horton Bay, Walloon Lake, The Point, and to be here and just see it is, is amazing. If you go to the JFK Library in Boston, where there are thousands and thousands of archived Hemingway photographs, you start looking at the pictures of northern Michigan, and you see the wildness. You see northern Michigan. But then it begins to occur to your imagination, oh my goodness, there's a lot of stumps. There's a lot of vacantness. There's a lot of open fields. What is that about? That is the reality of the Michigan that Hemingway was experiencing. In his invented imagination, he wanted it more more pristine, more, more grown up with trees. A better understanding of Ernest Hemingway's life and literature is now possible thanks to the Hemingway Letters Project at the Pennsylvania State University. Letters are interesting and important because they enrich our understanding of Ernest Hemingway who, because of this big public personality that he had, sometimes that, that caricature, that persona, overshadows uh, the real personality and it overshadows uh, his work as well. But the letters allow us to see him uh, in a full range of, of moods, situations. For scholars as well as general readers interested in Hemingway, it gives us a new Hemingway. Uh, one that maybe uh, steps apart from the stereotype of Hemingway that emerged early on when he was recognized for his writing in The Sun Also Rises, a work that in 1926 made him immediately popular uh, to a wide reading audience. So the publication of these letters is really important because it's beginning to show us already with the publication of Volume One a more tender Hemingway, uh, Hemingway who was above all a writer. He lived to write. Dear Ursula, you know, sometimes I really do think that I will be a hell of a good writer someday. Every once in a while I knock off a yarn that is so bloody good, I can't figure how I ever wrote it. I'll bring the carbons down to show you all. Everything good takes time, and it takes time to be a writer. But by God, I'm going to be one someday.